Welcome to the beauty station. Yes, Rita and Sharita. And I believe we'll have some more joining us. So just as a recap on what the beauty station actually is, and I, I labeled it beauty station because I feel like conversation was just too basic. You know, we're in this for the makeup, for the skincare, it's the whole feel and aesthetic of beauty. So I'm like, you know, why not have a beauty station instead of just a conversation? And that way we can kind of round this out and even incorporate some lifestyle and some style hacks as well. So um, this is off of social media so that we can actually engage. I feel that we do a routine you know, makeup artists, beauty pros, influencers, beauty gurus, we get online, we say a lot of things, and we leave you guys questioning it. You know, questioning products, trying to go back and figure out what we said about a product or see what the product is, does it actually work, and is it something that you need? And I feel that in this particular format, you'll get the opportunity to actually ask questions and get answers make comments on products that you've tried and how it's actually worked with your skin, your experiences, and we can find out about new things together. We can talk about trends, you name it. I want it to be really fun, really educational, and different. I just want people to have a breath, a breath of fresh air when it comes to beauty. At this point, you know, it's a lot happening. Thank you, Rita, with the pandemic with racism being so violently thrown <laughs> into the media like never before, you know, protesting, people being off work due to the pandemic, people are struggling, and I feel like sometimes people are grasping at whatever straws they can, and so when it comes to, to things like makeup or self-care, that can fall by the wayside. People can feel that it's not important, but truly, it really is. This is the season to elevate your look unlike any other. We have all of this extra time, and I'm really big about doing it on a budget because I don't want anybody trying to break the bank. Mm -hmm. There is a time for luxury, and there is a time for true budgeting. I think this is an era that we're in where true budgeting is a necessity. So having quality products that don't cost you your whole paycheck is essential to me. So I want to be able to talk about those things. Mm -hmm. And so I, I labeled tonight the skin you're in. I felt like what better place to start? It was either going to be eyebrows or your base. And since eyebrows couldn't happen first, I said, well, we're going to go with the base. Let's talk about skincare. And I thought about it. I said, I'm turning 32. My skin is changing. My skin is definitely changing at 32. I never struggled with acne. Now I have little breakouts. Thank God it's not major. I have little breakouts. <laughs> I never struggled really with discoloration. Now that's something that I'm dealing with. My eyebrows used to be uber full. Now they're thinning out. Now I need to do a little maintenance to them. But even when they're full, they're thinning out a little bit. So my skin is going through changes. And so I wanted to talk about age and skincare as well and then show you guys what i do in my foundation routine now let me let me give clarity on this part as well at the end of every beauty station there will be some type of showing a viewing if you will or mini tutorial this will not be a give me a full face tutorial each and every beauty station what i really want to do is to focus on micro tutorials meaning for example today I'm going to do my base and that's going to be it so I'm not going to highlight and I'm not going to contour I want to show you how I've been getting such a pretty base even with the texture in my skin what I changed about my routine and what's been working for me lately so that will be it when we do eyebrows it's going to be a focus on the brows and I really if I can have my way it would be two part. It would be a part about brow care, and then there would be a part about shaping brows and structuring them with brow products, if that makes sense. So some things okay. may come in more than one part because I really want my audience to have a great understanding of what they need personally, because you do not need everything that you see 
in a YouTube video or on a Facebook Live. You really do not. It can be so much simpler. And one of the premises of the community I've built is to help women learn how to create their own signature looks. And when we think about signature looks, yes, we think about personality, we think about style, but that's also something you hear normally that the makeup artist has. This is a signature look of the artist, but you have a signature look as an individual. And so I want you to be able to craft your own beauty and build your own beauty standard with the tools that you receive. That's why I say strengthen your skills and beauty so that you can obtain wealth because the way you represent yourself and present yourself in the arenas you walk into, you never know what doors will fly open. People take you a lot more serious. They actually want to hear what you have to say and they believe in you to produce what you said you are capable of producing. So this is really important to me that this is not a shallow process. This is not about being conceited and just being a pretty face. This is all about strengthening every skill that you have in your toolbox when it comes to your image, to creating your standard of beauty, to your self-assurance that when you put yourself together, you are polished and you know you got your act together. When you're getting ready to walk out that door, it's about making it simple because everybody is not like me. You know, we wear color one day and no color the next. Some truly just want the simp simplest looks, but it can be so beautifully polished. You know, then my skin, but better, I want you to learn how to truly get the my skin, but better with so little effort. So with that being said, one of the things I mentioned just a moment ago was skin changes. So are you guys experiencing any skin changes right now? Especially with the season turning over. I'm not sure if it's an allergy or what, but I'm literally like, my skin is going wonky. I had dry patches in my face akin to eczema. <laughs> Look, she said, don't get me started. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. Like, and at first, I was really confused on how to handle it. And you're talking about doing a full face of makeup, and you have these patches appearing on your face that are dry and flaky and thick. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do I need to go to the dermatologist? <laughs> <laughs> I started cleaning up like what's happening? <laughs> you know, now, I don't want to be shallow, but you know, the dominant part of my business is beauty. <laughs> so, you know, right now I'm getting nervous. I started clutching my pearls like I don't know what the face is doing. <laughs> so I was like, you know, exfoliating, just exfoliating, but ex exfoliating it was not enough. <laughs> it was not enough. I actually found out that. Personally, I was not having enough moisture intake. Like seriously, I've had to start taking um, different medicines for hormones, my hormones to, to balance them. I had some situations to come about um, even here in the pandemic and the thing was, you know, your hormones are out of whack and it happens as women. Every woman doesn't experience it, but many of us do. My hormones had gone wonky. The body features was going wonky. I listen, listen, I was praying, Lord, don't let me get out. <laughs> no. Lord, don't take me like this. Lord, don't let me get out. <laughs> listen, I was talking to God seriously. Oh, Jesus, don't let me get out. This is bad. This is hard on me. I had the hand, I was shaking. You know, people was, I was like, don't look at me. It was bad. So I found out that moisture was the issue. And y'all know people tell us, drink your water. Drink your water, drink your water. If you know me, if anyone knows me, Coke was my water. Ooh, I don't even want to talk about it because I get the fiending for a 20 ounce Coke, ice cold, and I've been trying to get off the Coke cold turkey. Coke was my water. So that was a huge part of why my skin had gone completely crazy. No water too much carbonation. So, you know, I even told myself, you know, maybe you can um, put some cucumbers, you know, mask it. Throw the cucumbers on the eyes and get your little lemon and squeeze and make your little brightening oil. 
you, I, I'm going to tell you something. I mm -hmm. was about to go Sarah Lee on facial care. Like, Betty Crockett. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, I don't want to get no chemicals, you know. I didn't want any chemicals because I wasn't sure if I was having, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was having allergic reactions or if I was just experiencing, you know, normal changes. I'm tired. I'm getting the dark circles. Let's brighten it up. Let me get a turmeric eye cream. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I didn't want to do any of that. I went and sat myself down, told myself the truth. You don't went too far and stayed too long. Put the Coke bottle down. Mm. Drink some water. I'm gonna tell you, I'm telling y'all that I went through something. And it was so much more that came out of that health-wise, but just adding that water to my internal. And I also changed my cleansing routine. So where I was getting away with just using the makeup removal wipes and then probably like deep cleansing the next day, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I hadn't even used the makeup removal wipe in weeks. I've literally been going in with a towel, hot water, and some type of cleanser on the towel. Okay, my makeup is rich. So yes, I'm ruining a towel, but that towel would just be designated for my face. And I can sterilize it and clean it you know, mm. but that's how I've been taking my makeup off. And my face has felt so much lighter. My pores have not been so gunky. And afterwards, here we go with moisture. So I have a friend who actually makes natural skin products. So they made me a oil for my hair but I've started using it on my face and it's literally got like mint and I couldn't even give you the ingredient list because when you look at the bottle there's so many colors of oil circulating in there but it and it smells amazing I love mint but the cooling sensation that that adds to my face and I haven't put anything on my face all day today but I have a natural glow but I'm putting this on every night after cleaning my face. So I'm literally giving my face time to soak in the moisture into the layers of my face. So one thing I have realized is that we don't know a lot about serums and essences. Do you guys know what an essence is? Sharita? No. You know what an essence is? You don't know? No, really. Sharita? Yes. Now, Rita, I want you to come on if you would be willing to unmute yourself if you can. Um, because what I know of an essence, an essence is similar to a serum, but you put it on first so that your serum is actually able to absorb deeper into your face, further than it would normally go. So the essence is like a top layer sponge, if you will. That sounds really weird, doesn't it? Let you, okay, okay, you, 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 get, you go ahead because I want you to come on here and talk about the essence. But that's what I've learned about essence is literally it's like you can put it on, you can put it on as a standalone, but if you put it on at night and put your serum or your facial oil on top of it, instead of your serum going two layers deep, it'll go five. So the firming effects or the... Um, brightening effects or the moisturizing effects that is supposed to have actually permeate deeper into your face with an essence. It is really amazing the things that are out there that we do not utilize or talk about. So while Rita is getting her good outfit on and getting herself camera ready, I will say this, I pride myself as an artist admit I pride myself as an artist on the fact that I will do these things in skin prep hey can you hear me okay her audio is connecting hey can you hear me yeah 
Okay. Let me put it in the chat. Jessica? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Have I missed it? No, you haven't missed it. We're actually engaged in a conversation about skin changes and the skin care that comes along with it. Okay. Okay. So I'm waiting on one of the, um, the guests on here, Rita. I was just asking them, did they know what an essence is? And have you ever heard of an essence for your face? No. Okay. So what I was telling them was, and I believe Rita likely knows way more than me, but an essence is similar to a serum, but you put it on your face and whatever you put on top of it is able to permeate into your skin deeper than it normally would. So... If the job for the product is to firm your skin and it's going to get through like two layers of your epidermis with an essence, it might reach five layers. So, so I, product. but uh, just I've never used anything on my face, nothing, it, you know, really? no, no serums or nothing like that, none. So, hey, you've been blessed, I'm kind of cautious about it. I'm 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 cautious okay. about it because I don't I don't want to start using something and you know I sometimes it turn your skin yellow and you know your auntie already had yellow so that wouldn't be right. I know. Or I know you are. So so I'm kind of scared for all like to do it to my skin. I've been seeing it on the TV and stuff. Well, now everything everything is not for you. I will agree to that, but I feel like if you have Fear or reservations, organic is always the way to go. So if you remember in the community when I posted those facial masks that you could create right from your refrigerator yeah. or your cabinet, organic yeah. is the way to go. Now the thing about organic is, like I say, you want to be cognizant of food allergy, most definitely, because if you have a food allergy and you put it on your face, you will still have the breakout. Mm -hmm. And I will not be blamed. <laughs> if you <can> turn around, <laughs> so that, so but, in other words, that's how come I don't do nothing to it. <laughs> that's, well, that's I'm still glad you got on here to tell us you don't do nothing, but I'm hoping that you know, through processes such as this format, things that you are questioning and hoping to learn more about, you will get just that out of this. Yeah, so I'm actually, you know, like I said, essences are designed to, and I keep picking this you all, I'm sorry, help us more than hinder us, but I do believe, like I said, that Rita knows more. So, Rita, she's <laughs> got herself together. I see you. A little yes, bit you together. <laughs> Better than I was. I was in my PJs. Um, yeah, so if you Jessica, will, will you help us understand what an essence actually is? Yeah, basically, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Um, essence is a little bit more powerful than your facial oil. And it's going to allow the other ingredients, as far as your moisturizer, to go deeper and penetrate the skin better. So you're just packing on layers and layers and layers so that your skin ultimately looks healthier. Now, if you use an essence by itself, will it still do you some justice? Or is it, it a product that needs to be used with another? It will because it's designed to be more potent. So, I mean, you know, let's say you get home late, you've been hanging out or whatever, you just wash your face and you put on your essence, like, oh, that's it, for now. you're good. It's not going to hurt you in any way. But it's more so designed so that it boosts your moisturizer, it'll boost your facial serum if you're going to use that, whatever else comes next. So you'd cleanse, essence, and then follow with your moisturizer. Cleanse, essence, and follow up with the moisturizer. Right. But you and I, we like right here because you're just like hitting the nail on the head of so many things that I speak about on my page. I mean, getting that skin together because if the skin don't look right, the makeup is not going to look good. It's not. It's not. And we have so many clients that come and they hold up a picture on their phone. Oh, and Lord. they say, I want to look like <laughs> this. And I, I'm always I taken first. aback. <laughs> I tell you, I'm always taken aback because it's either the face 
either it's a skin issue or what they're asking for on their eye structure. <laughs> I can get you close, but I can't get you that. I don't know if I could see my skin because the lighting is not good. Like I said, I wasn't really set up for this, but um, I don't know if like, if you could see, I have like crazy eczema, especially under here, it's extremely dark. Yeah. My problem Rare. is. <laughs> so, and I can only tell you what works for me, um, but it's like you said too, it's the, our diet. Most of the time with black people, our diets are crap. Right. Oh, you know, and you know, so part of that we have to take responsibility for. Um, also, just made 56. So my skin is in menopause hell right now. <laughs> Thank you. So it, you know, it, it's a lot. <laughs> and see, I would have never imagined that you were 56 years old. I never would have imagined it. Thank you. Thank you. I really, when I saw your picture in the in the business group that we're in, I was like, she looks as young as me, and now you're telling me you're 56, so, you know, that, that I need to work on me, because that makes me feel like I'm looking old too fast, but, but no, you know, no. we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> I really have to say, I love what you're doing, because it's so on point, especially in this space that we're in right now, because number one, we do need to learn how to save those dollars, we need to learn how to Take care of ourselves better, self-care, and eat better. Um, and we need to learn to go back to nature as far as, like, you know, think of what your mom did and maybe what your grandmother did as far as skin care. When all these products, the 20 products that they're saying, you know, on YouTube that you need to look good, you don't need all of that. You, you know? really so, do not. So now, Sharita, you, saying, you said, what do you think about turmeric soap? Me personally, as far as I know, turmeric has a brightening agent. I'm a fan of turmeric. Um, I don't have it here with me only because I'm doing this particular one in my home space. But next time I'll be in my salon space that I actually do makeup from where I have my entire setup. And I'm going to show you guys some of like the eye creams that I use. Like I use Skin Iceland. I also have a turmeric based moisturizer that I have enjoyed using to actually brighten some of the dark spots that I have in my face. Now, the thing about it is those are not cure-alls. They're not cure-alls because keeping the, clean, keeping the skin clean and the pores unclogged is going to be a big part of it. And that means actually reading what's on your product label. Because they do make products now that are non-comedogenic so that they don't dig deep into your pores and it's hard to clean out and then you got a whole mess on your hand with bumps and dark spots and if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation some of that is going to come with the overnight process overnight routine and instead of just leading you to color correcting you can color correct all day long but sometimes that will make it worse it really will putting products on top of an issue that you don't know the root cause of can sometimes make it worse. So I always say, make sure you have an overnight routine like I was just discussing each night. I'll cleanse my face a certain way and then I'll apply my oils to get that moisture in my skin and whatever is in there that's supposed to be a brightening agent, it needs to do its job overnight. And also what you said about as far as the makeup wipes, like I understand like, you know, sometimes you just come in and you tell you just like, mm -hmm. okay, that's it. You know, I mean, we're well, all human. Those things are going to happen, but you should not be doing that every day. No. You know, that's that's not good. That's not the way to go. So, no. for me... And they don't get your face 100% clean. Exactly. They only get you about 60% of the way. Exactly. So, when I put on makeup, I usually wash my, my face, I would say, at least four times to get everything off. Yeah. Multiple washes. The, yeah, I haven't tried the turmeric yet. I've heard good things about it, but I tend to use the black soap. But I, I have to try the turmeric because that might be now. Sharita, do you have some turmeric wash? For me, um, Sharita. Oh, Sharita. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear me. I think her phone goes in and out a little bit. Okay. Let me ask her in the chat. Give me one moment. Sure. <laughs> And hopefully she'll see that. 
I believe she's looking at it. I'm going to give her a second. <laughs> uh, I actually have the soap. Okay. It's the source that I got off Amazon. So uh, I'm not sure how to use it, how often I use it, if it really works. They didn't give you any instructions with it when you bought it? They said, oh, they used Dilly, but didn't say, okay, is it one time or two times? or And it smells readily medicine-y. So I don't know if it's a true 100% natural turmeric. Now, I'm going to tell you, with something like that, I really can't say because I don't know who the provider is and what they actually put in it. But if it were me, just because I don't know the strength or the mildness of the product, I wouldn't go beyond mm -hmm. twice a week. Once at the beginning of the week and mm -hmm. one heading on the end of the week until I've given this product a thorough testing to see what type of reaction mm -hmm. I'm going to have. And then once I bump it up, I'm probably not going to use it beyond three times a week. Once in the front, mm -hmm. once in the middle, once at the end. Just me personally. I wouldn't want to overuse. I mean, natural products are great, but you mm -hmm. really have to take mind to that some are really potent yeah. and can cause mm -hmm. skin reactions, even skin irritations if you're not careful. So I feel like the lighter the usage in the beginning, if you catch that irritation, you have a chance to solve the problem and kind of mm -hmm. backpedal and see what's going wrong versus if you go in heavy on the gas, <laughs> and then you have a major breakout, you'll Hello. panic and you won't know what way to go to solve your issue. So I would say try it. Give it one go, you know, this week. See how the smell does with you. See how your skin feels with it. Do that a couple of weeks. And if you're feeling it, bump it up to twice a week. I wouldn't do over three. And then you let us know huh? how you like it <laughs> since you have the turmeric soap. You come into the community and tell us about the turmeric soap in case we're considering getting some. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to know more about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a group thing, you know, and that's the whole point of this. Your beauty guru does not know everything. Your makeup artist does not know everything. There are some women who have never picked up a brush and touched another face with it that I'm sure are a wealth of knowledge that I would love to have. So I don't want to create, I don't want to create a culture of, oh, she said it, so that just makes it right, which is why I gave Rita the open floor. I've seen Rita's page, you know, I went on there browsing, when she said she knew something about, if you know something about essences, <laughs> take the floor. I'm here, you know, even though I'm leading the initiative, I'm teachable. I'm teachable by others because we are wealth of knowledge. So you learn about that turmeric soap, you come back and tell us about that turmeric soap. So then we'll know. Okay, okay. And where you got it from, too. We want to know. Yeah, so, definitely. <laughs> I'm excited, guys. This is fun. And you know what? It's not a bunch of people. The numbers will grow. But this is the culture that I want to create us to be able to get on and say, hey, I don't use anything, but I've been curious about things I've been seeing. Or this is what has worked mm -hmm. for me. And to be able to actually just talk about it and get some answers, or if it's not answers, reassurance. Because that's what self-assurance is all about. Having a confirmation that you're moving in the right direction makes all of the difference in the world. So I'm here for it. It is 6.45, and as I stated to Sharita before we got started recording, I'm actually on my way out of town. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and move into the show me segment. Um, and the, I don't, y'all, that's my auntie. That's my auntie, my, my natural born auntie. She's trying to get back in. <laughs> okay, T, we got you back in here. So what I want to do um, before we close out, because as I stated, I don't want these to be super long. I mean, when the conversation gets good, we can be on here two hours talking, but life is still happening. And so are we. So I feel like 45 minutes to an hour is great for a good topic and conversation to get some great tips, pointers, and tricks out there and then have a moment for me to show you guys something that I'm doing or whoever has the stage to show us what they're doing. 
you know, so it's not a self initiative. So this, uh -huh. Uh -huh. this, and my auntie said she doesn't use anything, but I'm gonna tell you this face oil. This is the Milani Green Goddess. Let me say, I started out with the rose oil, but I have a major allergy to floral fragrances. So I put on the rose oil and my eyes wouldn't stop watering. Mm. I didn't get the sneezes too bad because I had taken an allergy pill before trying it, but it was still really potent considering it was an oil on my resting on my face. So I opted to try this particular face oil. And the reason that, the reason that sparked this is because I wanted to try a dewy look. I have very dry skin and I say, you know what, I wanna try something different in my makeup. So, I ordered this from Ulta for nine dollars. Probably for the grand of CVS. Rita, what you say? Is that from Milani Cosmetics? Uh huh, Milani. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yes, and when I tell you guys, this smells so good. And so, you know, I told you at the beginning, I'm going to show you what I've been doing as of late in my foundation routine and how I've changed now. To know me with the foundation routine, you know, I, you would know I work in layers. So I'm going to moisturize, layer primers, and then lay my foundation. But I found on my own skin, with the skin changes I've been experiencing and the dryness of my skin, that was not giving me the look I wanted to see any longer. It just really was, and I was not satisfied. So I got this face oil. I'm going to go ahead and drop some on. I start at the center. I hit those cheeks real good. And it smells so good. That's the best part to me. And I work that in even into my eyebrow. Right under my eye. Not in the eye. I don't put this on my eyelids. <laughs> but, you know, people that take, and I do go ahead and put it on my mouth. Because the reality of it is I'm probably going to be putting on a matte lipstick. So applying that moisture that can set into my lips before I do so is important to me because I have feathering, terrible, terrible feathering. So once I've gotten it in and I like to press it because my face feels good and it's not sticky and just work that product in, the warmth of your skin will fix anything you put on your face nearly. Like seriously, if you make a blooper with your makeup, your hands, the warmth, and the texture of your skin typically can fix it. So I am a skin worker. I work dominantly with brushes, but when it comes to the prepping and layering parts, I do tend to work with my hands. So after I do that, I'm gonna go in with more moisture. Pawns, $2 and family dollar, $2. <laughs> Best moisturizer I've used yet. And I'm sure there's some great ones on the aisles, and I've tried a few, but nothing has really hit home and stuck with me like Pump Puns has, and I kind of take just a few little dabs of that. And I'm gonna rub it in real good and get that all nice and silky feeling. And listen, y'all can see right here on camera how my skin has already made a 360. Mind you, I hadn't put any moisturizer on my skin since last night. Just because I wanted to be able to come on um, naturally and organically do this particular process for you all so that you all can see the changes as they happen. After that, I will say because my pores are larger in around my nose, right three-quarter way into my cheeks, I will take a small bit, and I mean a small bit. I used to apply this all over my face, but this is my e.l.f. Putty Primer. It's like an $8 primer in Walmart. e.l.f. Putty, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I was trying to figure out where the poreless should go. The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer is what I go in with, and I just put a little bit here in this area. And I'm not gonna really concentrate that too far anywhere else. And instead of just swiping and spreading that product, because it's going to spread considering I put oil and moisturizer on my face, I'm going to start to tap so that I can get that product focused right where I want it to be. 
And after I do that, it's foundation time. I know, right? You haven't put nothing else on your face? <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> and when I say not a thing, now I'm going to tell you the foundation I'm going in with is full coverage. Typically, I use my L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, which is my favorite drugstore available foundation. It really works well with all skin, skin types that I've worked with thus far, and they have a beautiful range of color. So that is a dominant in my kit, but this is my personal foundation. I have not added it to my kit yet, but I really like it. This is the Huda Faux Filter Foundation. She has a nice assortment of colors. Really, it was really interesting to match myself. I will say that. When I looked at my options, this was as close as we were getting. And this is called Coffee Bean with a red undertone. The colors in front and behind it were really interesting to me. So I do want to add some of these to my kit, but it will really be in a lighter spectrum. I feel like her darker spectrum is still being worked on, if that makes sense, because it wasn't um, expansive. It, it, it didn't have a huge expanse at all. But for the Chocolate Girl Friendlies, I'm going to go in with about that much on my brush. And I start there with a the swipe, 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 there. And I'm going to grab a mirror right quick so I can actually see. Got this little $12 morph palette that's new and the mirror's not dirty, so let's use it. Show you how much you use an eyeshadow palette by how dirty the mirror is. Yep. <laughs> so I and by the way this is a paddle brush a flat oval foundation brush and I love 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 my beauty blender but when I tell you using this to spread this foundation on the base that I'm using now has been wonderful and it's a little work just a little bit but it's worth it so, and it's easy because I actually like to get foundation in my brow hairs so that when I actually fill in my brows, which is now in my routine, my last step, after I've done everything, I have a even base and even base to work from. And I do believe in blending foundation into the hairline slightly. And it's not a lot, but I get it in the hairline. Because the goal is to be as seamless as possible. Now, you all see how easy that's spreading? And if you have any questions or statements, please, 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 by all means, say it. Now, paddle brush takes a little bit more work than a beauty blender, and I'm still going to blend it down, down the chin and the neck. I'm still going to get right around my mouth. And with this being more of a um, full coverage foundation, the spread is good. And with it being red, it cancels out my dark areas really well. And what I would do lastly is go across the top of my eyelids and get that even for both, even in that little dip right at the inner socket, I mean the inner tear duct. And that is a really light coverage on a full coverage foundation, being that I use the oil and moisturizer base but it works so well for me. So if I'm gonna do anything else, I'll just take my beauty blender and get rid of streaks. And the rest of it is a matter of completing the process. And two, one thing a beauty blender is gonna do is bring the excess off the face. 
beauty blenders, depending on the type you get, they're designed to do a certain thing. This is the original beauty blender. So this baby is going to pick up extra product. It is not going to leave it on your face. <laughs> it doesn't matter what coverage you're going for. The original beauty blender is coming off your face. So, and that is, if I wanted to just walk out the house with just the base done, I would feel very comfortable doing it this way. Because for me, it's a true skin-like finish. It's not, I didn't have to do all the extra being spread a hundred times to get the skin-like finish. I got the skin-like finish before I sprayed it and did anything else. So then when I go to, and, and to, let me, let me throw this in there. For me, this process also helps eliminate me overusing products. Like seriously. Sometimes we can lay on so much product. <laughs> Rita, I know that in Rita. your hair. Forget it. <laughs> you hear me? Rita knows. Sometimes, you know, you're really working and you really feel like, oh, it's just really coming together. But you put so much product on that you have to dab and do with other things. If it's like taking paper towels to lift the excess before you go in with the powder, and then you're trying to mat that sucker down <laughs> to make sure it doesn't move. You know, if, if a skin-like finish is really what you're going for, you have to learn different ways to achieve it that won't kill your skincare work, if that makes sense. So all the work you do in your skincare routine, it doesn't have to die because you didn't put on a hundred um, primers. You can still achieve the goal. If you guys have been looking at my makeup lately, my pictures is very different than the pictures that I was posting last year. Still aesthetically pleasing, but it's actually grown and become more mature just because I chose to take out a couple of steps. And sometimes I use those steps because you know your primer is designed to not only prepare your skin, but to change the texture of the makeup. That's why you have mattifying primers, primers that are for glow, primers that are to help leave your makeup looking moisturized you have primers for a plethora of things so they're going to alter what the foundation base is actually supposed to do before you go in and throw all this other stuff on top of it and tell it that's not what you're going to do because many times that's what we do it's supposed to do one thing and then we're going to set it up in a certain way for it to do another and we let the sprays finish it what i wanted to develop was a way to get a breathable skin finish where my skin didn't feel so heavy and bogged down and where I also don't have to feel insecure about my texture in which I don't have as much texture as some but around my cheeks I do I have texture and it can stand out depending on the process that I use so it just hit me like a spark of inspiration one day. Leave a lot of the primer behind. Moisturize your face. Lay your foundation base. Let that melt into your skin. And then finish the process. And it also shifted and shaped what products I chose to use next. Which we're going to cover in another beauty station when I talk to you about types and textures of products such as your cream your liquid your powder your paste you know wax bases oil bases all of that matters so i find that now i use a lot more cream products even though i have a liquid base i might use a cream style concealer a cream style contour and i'll still set it with a powder but what it does for me is it doesn't leave my face feeling caked up, tight, over dried, especially in the under eye area where you, you're already dry. It's the driest place on your face. You know, I just figured out a way to keep that moisture I've been working on and still keep my face from slipping and moving around. So I can still wear my makeup all day and look flawless. Like literally. So I, hope, I can be chatty. 
I, I can be chatty, so I hope I didn't give you too much in one moment. <laughs> no, I'm learning to notice the facial expressions. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna give it too much in one moment. No, no, I, I like the finish. It really looks nice. It really Thank you. Very pretty. Thank you. And that foundation isn't half bad. It's really okay. not. Okay. It's not over fragrance. And like I said, when you apply it, it spreads really well. And you guys just saw that for yourself. Does anybody have any questions about your base? I want you to try it. Now, Auntie, Auntie, I know you're going to stick with your routine. But if you would just do me the honors of just trying it one time, just once, and let me know how you like it. Okay. Okay, just once. Okay. And just let me know. I went to the store, and it was safe. It was safe. Or it wasn't. Okay, I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm definitely gonna go give me some puns. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Old girl getting old girl getting up there, so I need to stay beautified as much as possible. And you know what? You have actually aged really gracefully. So I feel like a routine like this, especially when you're aging more, it's better. Because when you use a lot of powders and different texture substances on skin that is is really changing because of age it can turn out to not be so good don't let some of those right. instagram pictures fool you <laughs> yes because it takes a lot of work on mature skin and it takes a lot of editing to get some of what you see right. i say the simpler the better you don't want anything that's going to set into your fine lines and make them deeper you don't want anything that's going to cake up on your skin that may be starting to shift and move because you may be losing weight or gaining weight. Right. You don't want that. So less can be the best when you're dealing with age. So a, a routine like this where you add your moisture overnight and go back in with a little moisture and add your product and set it with a beautiful powder will be just enough to give you a beautiful radiant skin finish and a glow. Okay. that'll last you all afternoon long just try it one time i know you got your routine just give me one time and let me okay. know how you like it or don't like it okay okay sharita you good oh, she can't hear me <laughs> she can't hear me i'm going to text her let me message her here in the chat Okay, I'm gonna give her a moment to respond. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I knew you couldn't hear me, so I wanted to make sure. Rita, did you have anything else that you would like to add? Um, what brush was that that you were using? The foundation. This brush. is a brush I actually got this one from Vanity Planet. Oh. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you the one that I actually like like the most. And my brushes are across from me, but it is by Luxie. Luxie's dual fiber um, paddle brush is wonderful. And I use that, yes, I use that religiously to blend out my contour and marry my colors together. I'm going to show you guys that process because you normally see people just dot, 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 dot with a whole bunch of bright color. And then they blend it. They say, you don't, want, you don't want lines of demarcation, but they never show you how to actually marry the colors together. Right. So I'm going to show you guys my routine on that that I use on myself and clients to get a seamless highlight and contour that works as a face. But anything else, ladies? Because I'm going to go ahead and close out here. Like I said, you know, I want the segments to be short, but I had so much fun and I want to thank you guys for jumping on. I'm going to put the replay in the community as well. Oh, okay, good. We're good? Good. Thank you. Good night, y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.